Okay, in this video, we're gonna be talking about FTP or file transfer protocol. This is something you're gonna to need to know really well in order to pass any kind of certification. You will need to know how to get files off of an FTP server. You're gonna to need to know how to put files onto an FTP server. And so it's pretty simple. Um, so this video might seem like information overload, but it's really simple to learn and really simple to exploit uh, once you know what you're doing. So you might have to watch this video a time or two and then work through the box devel once or twice, but it is really simple and you will be really comfortable with it eventually. So if you're new to the world of FTP, just be ready for a kind of an information overload, but it really is pretty simple once you get the hang of it. So I have this little image right here where we are the client and we talk to a server over here through FTP, which is gonna be open on port 21. So what we can do is we can send files over to the server and the server will store them. And we can also look and view files on the server and they will send them back. But in order to use FTP, we're gonna either have to be able to log in anonymously or we're gonna to have to have some kind of credentials in order to log into the FTP server in order to share these different files. So let's go ahead and check this out. Over here, I have already opened up the box devel and ran an in-map scan. So we see we have port 80 open and port 21. And just a tip, if you are going for any kind of certification or doing a CTF, you need to, especially for certifications, read every single one of these words that is put out on the nmap scan because it is really common for different certifications to put something down here like a service or have something running up here and if you miss it you will not be able to exploit that specific machine so you need to be ready to read every single word inside of here so that way you can google what you don't understand and look for different exploits so that was just a little bit of free information so we have port 21 right here and it tells us anonymous ftp login allowed and then it even lists the files for us that are on the ftp server so what we want to do um, is check to see if we can get and put files to this FTP right here. And then we want to see if they go onto this web server so that way we can exploit it. Remembering that maybe we can put files onto the FTP server, but maybe there's no way for us to actually execute the file that is put on the FTP server. Then we're not able to do anything. We can put things on there all day long and we're not able to get a reverse shell. We need some way to be able to execute our file that we put on the FTP server. So first I wanna show you how to get stuff off of the FTP server and then also see how this can be useful for us and then how this is gonna work in certification scenarios as well as CTFs. So logging into FTP is really simple. We want to make sure we're in the proper location. So desktop box devel, so that way I know where all my files are being put from and also gonna be downloaded to when I get them off of the server. So logging into FTP is really simple. So we just put in FTP and then the IP address and because it's anonymous login, we'll just type in anonymous just like this and we don't even need to put anything in the password. You can just leave it blank and hit enter and it's going to say user logged in now if you find credentials say through some kind of smb share uh, you're going to want to check ftp and see if you can log in because sometimes you'll have to chain different exploits or vulnerabilities together so if they have ftp open and you find credentials through an smb server then you want to go back and check out ftp and make sure that, that there's nothing crucial stored inside of FTP because you might be able to find some files. So in FTP, you can use dir or you can use ls to list. And we want to see this right here. We have this message.txt. I put this here on purpose just for this demonstration. It's not actually a part of the devel box, but what we wanna do whenever we get or put files to or from an FTP server is we wanna type in binary and it'll switch the mode. We'll want to put and get files from binary because sometimes our exploits won't work if we put a file to the server without switching it to binary. Getting them from the server, it's not such a big deal, but to get it, we just type in get and then we'll type in message.txt and it will download to the directory that we have right here, which I have stored over here. So we can go ahead and ls and we have this message.txt. So what you can do is cat out this message.txt just like this and it says, uh, we will be checking all files manually on this FTP server. Now, the reason I put this in here is because you're gonna see this on some kind of certifications and you're probably gonna see this for sure in some CTFs. When it says we'll be checking files manually, you have to think there's some kind of program running on the back end of this server that's gonna open up whatever you put on there. And the reason that's a big deal is because if you're on a Windows machine, you can put a Windows reverse shell payload on the FTP server and maybe every one minute, three minutes, five minutes, there's a program that's gonna execute that. And if you're listening on a port, you'll be able to get a shell. You have to be thinking through CTFs like things like this. So we put so if we put the file on here and if we so if we see a clue like this and we put a file on here, we'll want to set up a listener and then just wait or keep doing enumeration and checking other things out on the server. 
but we want to have a listener going just in case it actually manually runs our code on the back end or the file that we put on the server and we get a shell back. So this is something you need to be aware of. You'll see this in SMB. You'll see this sometimes on FTP servers. So you'll want to be ready to read these texts. And if you see anything that says they're going to manually do anything ever, that's a pretty dead giveaway in a CTF or certification that somebody is going to be executing this on the back end or a program is going to be executing this on the back end. So so we'll go ahead and clear this and I'm going to delete this message.txt from the FTP server because that's not a part of the box. So now if we ls it should be gone right here. Now what I want to show you is because our in-map scan shows us we have this port 21 as well as this port 80 open, we want to see if our files that we put in port we put on the FTP server shows up on the port 80 or on the web server. So what we'll do is we can just come out here and we can just go 10, 10, five like this. So we have this web server and we're gonna put a file. So I imagine if we copy this welcome.png and we look at it, we're going to get this image right here. So we wanna put a file on this FTP server. So we'll come back over here and I already grabbed a PNG off of my box. So the way you would do this is you can just go locate um, and we wanna locate .png, there's gonna be a ton of them and you can just copy one of these to your current location. This is the one that I copied. So I went copy, paste, um, and then at the front, we want to go to we want to go to the front and we want to press copy and then we can go to the end and you can save it as z.png is what I did. So that's how I got this right here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say put and we want to put z.png and that should upload to the FTP server. And if this is connected to the web server, we can come up here, delete this and type in z.png. And so we see it and now what we can do is grab a reverse shell in order to put this on the server. So the easiest way to go about this is to just type in msf venom and cheat sheet right here. So we can open this up. We'll hit command find and we want ASPX. So this one right here. So we'll copy this and we will put it in our folder. So we'll paste that in and then we're going to come through here and we're gonna change our port to 4444. We're gonna change our IP address to the IP address that we have from Hack the Box and mine is 10142. And we want to delete this interpreter and we're gonna give it shell underscore reverse TCP. So this looks good, we can run it, and this will create our payload for us. And now we should be able to come over here as long as we haven't been logged out. We can make sure we're in binary and we can put our reverse shell ASPX. And now it says it's been put. You can actually run an LS. Sometimes when you put stuff and it isn't running in binary, it'll put a zero right here and that means it has zero bytes were put but since we see some of our information was stored here we can assume that our payload has been put on here so now what we want to do is run a netcat listener um, just like this so on port 444 and now we should be able to browse this location so we should be able to go reverse dot aspx and it looks like it worked for us and we have a shell back over here. So those are two different ways that you're gonna be able to use the FTP server in order to get a reverse shell or pull down some information that is gonna be really valuable to you as a penetration tester. This is something you will need to know how to do in order to pass any kind of certification in the future and to be successful in a lot of CTFs. So with that, thanks for watching